Say hello to the Weld Bunny. Why is it called that? Well, just look at it. But wait a second, didn't I just make a spot welder a few months ago and called it the best DIY spot welder? So why another one? Well, it turns out it wasn't the best after all. See, car batteries die and every 10 days that I didn't use my welder, the battery would just need a slow and painful recharge. Also, as the battery got weaker, the welds got weaker too, which is not safe when you are building 18650 battery packs. I needed something that was always on standby, just a plug and play solution that I can use anytime I wanted. So let's see how I made it and let's see if it's powerful and reliable. Now the first step is to get an old microwave and salvage the transformer from it. Be careful while doing that since you can get a pretty fatal shock if you don't discharge the big capacitor right next to it. Next is to plan your build. Uh, I mounted the transformer on a piece of wood for the timer. I ordered this module that a friend of mine had recommended. To power it, a 9 volt battery would be good, but remember, as I said, I wanted to get rid of batteries. So instead, uh, a transformer from an old phone charger was used, and this 12 volt transformer will be our power supply for the timer module. I then cut the secondary coil of the transformer, which is the thinner wire, and replace it with a thick 25 millimeter squared wire since this is our high current secondary winding. This will be our uh, high current secondary winding. The whole thing also needed an enclosure so the top was made from bent metal sheet and the front and back panels were designed and 3D printed as per the dimensions of the setup. The module was trial fitted and then the whole setup was given a bit of a paint job. Once all the components were fit inside, they were insulated with heat shrinks, silicone, hot glue in all exposed places to ensure no bare wires touch each other or other metal surfaces. This is very important because you don't want to shock yourself with 220 volt AC current. Uh, the connections uh, could look a little messy and confusing, but this is uh, how I connected them. The power supply socket that I got from an old laptop power supply has three wires. The ground, which is connected to the transformer ground and insulated, a live and a neutral wire. So the neutral wire goes to the transformer directly and it has a convenient quick disconnect to connect the live and neutral wires on the primary phase. The live wire goes from the inlet to the module L in and from the L out to the transformer and that's about it. I also put a little 13 amp fuse for protection on the live wire. Please do this. If anything shorts, this will be the first thing to blow and can be a lifesaver. To power the module, there is a row of inlets where the live and neutral wires from the small transformer go and the primary winding of the transformer is connected to the main supply just like the big transformer. And additional two wires from the board go to uh, the holder and whenever the button is pressed, these wires short and let current flow. The holder was reused from the previous spot welder project. I carefully inspected that everything is properly insulated and the connections are in the correct order. As we're playing with the mains electricity of 220 volts, this is pretty dangerous stuff. The module has a calibration function that checks the transformer input voltage the very first time it's powered on. After that, the current and timing can be set depending on your liking and the power of the welds that are needed. Now this is a dual pulse welder, which means it sends two pulses in a very short time. And that's why we have the settings uh, C1 and C2, which is current during pulse one and current during pulse two. And the time uh, that the pulse one takes and the time that the pulse two uh, is activated for. Int just means the interval between these two pulses. And it seems the push style holder that I'm using doesn't work too well with this type of controller because the controller activates only after the button is pushed. So I stripped the control wires and used a small push button instead. And now the welder works perfectly every time. 
my copper rods are also a bit thick and um, I need a new holder uh, but that is for another day for now it does a very acceptable job at welding as for the settings on the controller I started with the lowest possible settings which is setting the timers to 1 and the currents to 30 and it seemed to work okay but I thought I needed a bit more on time so I increased both timers to 2 and now it makes perfect welds every time seems like I really made a spot welder which is powerful and reliable the welds were spot on and they were impossible to separate the welder is always available on demand I can just flick the switch and use it whenever I wish to uh, the only cost is the $15 I spent on the controller module uh, but you can factor in the cost for uh, the one meter thick grounding wire um, the small transformer and uh, other 3d printed parts I will leave a link for the product that I used in the description and with the weld bunny alive and kicking it means we are going to be building a lot of battery packs one wheels skateboards drones all sorts of crazy stuff so don't forget to click the notification icon once you subscribe if those are the kind of things that give you the kick and before i sign off a big shout out to my friend remy who helped me with the module and its settings he's made a kick-ass one wheel so go check it out on the channel uh, and show him some love his video is in the description below keep engineering and thanks for watching